In this video, let's start by taking a look at how we can rig this trawler so that we can animate it sailing through this ocean. And we want to do it in such a way so that it reacts to the ocean in a very natural way. So let's start by taking a look at what the trawler is actually made up of. So I'm just going to hide the ocean. So I've got the main body of the trawler, and then I've got a couple of radars that sit on the top so they can be spinning during the animation. But two really important important items are the wake and the footprint. So I unhide the footprint. So this is just a piece of geometry that wraps around the boat. And this is going to act as an emitter for particles. And this is going to help us to generate uh, the spray in the wake that's generated by the boat as it's moving through the waves. And that's really going to add to the believability of the scene. And then to control those particles, I've got a layer of curves, which allow us to control the actual shape of the particles as they're being emitted through the scene. Okay, so let's start by creating a locator that's going to allow us to move the whole thing around the scene. So we'll add a locator. I'll just move it up above the trawler. And we'll call this Trawler Mover. So then we need another locator below that that's going to allow us to move the trawler relative to that locator. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate that guy, parent it to that locator, and we'll rename it the local. Now the most important thing about this rig is we want the trawler to react to the deformation of the ocean surface. Now we can do that by using a surface constraint. So if I bring back the ocean and I'm going to select the trawler mover local and then the ocean itself. We go to modifiers and then select an intersect surface constraint. Now we need to set that up in the right way. So if I go to intersect, change the mode to ray, the axis to y, and we want it to be a negative axis. So we want to what it's doing is projecting down from that locator to the surface and then creating a new locator at that surface. So I'm just before I parent anything to that locator, I need to drop the wave height. So I'll select wave height, set that to zero. So we now want the radars parented to the trawler, and we want the trawler parented to that new locator. So now if I set the wave height back up to 10 meters and then hit play, we can see that the trawler is reacting to the textures that are driving or deforming that ocean plane. So what about the wake and the footprint? How are we going to get those to conform to the ocean surface? Well, it's actually very easy. So first of all, we need it to move around. We need them to move around with the trawler. So I'm just going to shift select them and parent them to the trawler mover local. And then if I just select them and add those to the schematic, we want those to pick up any deformation or all the deformation from the ocean. So all we've got to do, if I shift select them, hold down shift, I can grab both of those and hook them both into the transform effector. And you can see now that they're following following the motion or the deformation of the ocean as well. So let's just test this. So if I select trawler mover, I can move that around and you can see everything conforming to the surface. But if I rotate the mover, you can see that the wake and the footprint rotate, but the trawler doesn't. So what I'm going to have to do is drive some channels. So if I with the trawler mover selected, I'm going to go to channels and I'm going to bring in rotation Y. I'm going to select the trawler itself. Let's add some rotation and also rotation Y. And we'll just directly link those two channels. And you can see the trawler now follows it. Now there's a couple of things I want to add to the rig. Now when the boat comes to the top of a wave, the bow of the boat is going to break the surface and then come crashing down the other side of the wave. Now during that process, the footprint of the boat is going to change. So what I want to be able to do is scale both of these items to account for the change in that in the, the footprint of the boat. 
So what I'm going to do is go to center mode and select the center for each of those items and move them right to the back. Do the same with the footprint. So now we can just scale those items from that point and change the footprint accordingly. Now for the wake, as the boat crashes down, we also want more spray to be generated at the front of the front of the boat. So what I've done is created a morph which changes the shape of the curve at the front. So to add that morph, let's go to the setup tab and with the wake selected, let's come to deformers and add a morph deformer and then we'll just select that morph and put the strength back down to zero. So next we need to think about how we want to interact with those channels that we need to animate during the animation. So what we can do is create a locator, which is going to move it up above the trawler, and then parent it into trawler mover local, and I'm going to call this controller. And then if we go to user channels, and we'll add a user channel, and the first thing we want to control is the morph. So we'll call this wake morph. Click in there to create the channel name. And a morph is a percentage. So we'll set the percentage. And we don't want any kind of um, specific values. We just want to take the default value as zero as a starting point. So it's OK. And then we'll just add that channel into the schematic. And then we also want to control the scale of these two items. So go back to user channels, we'll add another user channel, and we'll call this wake scale. And again, it's going to be a percentage because scale is a percentage. And I want the default value to be 100. It's OK. And that will appear in the schematic as well. So now we've just got to hook those channels up to the channels that we want them to drive. So if I select morph influence, we want the strength. So Wake Morph can go to Strength, and then we need the Z Scale of Trawl Awake, and also the Z Scale of the Footprint, and we can just link that straight in. So let's make that locator easier to select an OpenGL. So if you've got a display, Locator Shape, make it custom and I want it to be a sphere. I'll just increase the scale a little bit. And if you want to we can add a label, just call that controller. We can see that in there. Now we can do the same thing for controller mover. Go to locate a shape. Replace this time I want it to be a circle on the white. Increase the size of that. And we could actually make that solid. And if we add drawer options, we could make the center of it a color to make it a bit make it a bit more obvious to see. Now we can make those user channels visible every time we select that locator by selecting the locator and under assembly we can just select item dot channel hall for the command. So now if I select that we get this head up display in OpenGL so I can change the wake at the front of the boat very easily now. So now we can start animating this boat. Let's start first with the two radars. So I'll select radar one. And uh, we just need to animate the rotation Y channel. So I'll key it. And then at about frame 60, it'll do a full 360 degree rotation. And I'll open up the graph editor. Again, we want, to be, want it to be a continuous rotation. So I'll set the pre and post behaviors to linear. And then the 
other radar can do exactly the opposite. So again, we'll, we'll key it at 0, 60, it'll go minus 360 degrees. And again, set the pre and post behavior to linear. Now if we play that, the radars are spinning. Now I also want the boat traveling at a constant speed. Now because it's rough weather, it's going to be traveling pretty slowly. Now I've worked it out that if he was traveling at about six knots, then he's going to be traveling at three meters per second. So if I select the trawler mover local, we can key the Z channel. And then if we go one second in the animation, which is frame 25, we can change that to three meters, right click, and again set the pre and post behavior to a linear. So now he's moving at six knots all the time, no matter where I position him in the scene. So with that set, let's increase the wave height again, back up to 10 meters. Uh, if I zoom out, I want him to be sailing against the waves. At the moment he's going with those waves. So I select the mover, hit W, and we'll just position him into his kind of starting position. So with that starting position set, all we need to do now is animate the pitch and roll of the boat itself. So if I select the boat, I'm just going to key rotation X and rotation Z. Hit the E key. And we can start to really refine this animation. And we also might want to key the Y position because at certain points in the animation they might sink a little bit deeper into the water. For example, there. So if you scrub forward in the animation, you want to key it at the bottom of each wave. And then also at the top of each wave. But when the boat reaches the top of the wave, the bow of the boat needs to break the surface. And then as the boat comes over the wave, the bow needs to crash down. And the whole boat really needs to go deep into the water. So I've taken this up to about a thousand frames. If I hit play, you can see how the boat is moving. So the bow breaks the surface and it crashes down. It's going to hit a very big wave in a minute. There we go. And it crashes down again. So when you're happy with the motion of the boat, the next thing you need to do is animate the wake. So it's easy, easy to do this if you hide the ocean. So as you scrub forward, you need to make sure that that piece of geometry is always touching the outside of the boat. For example, when it breaks the surface, you can see how it's actually going too close to the bow of the boat there. So there's a position where it needs to be scaled. So select the controller, we'll go to user channels and we'll key those two channels. Let's go forward. You can see how it sinks down there. So I'm going to select that controller and let's scale that whole thing a little bit. There we go. And then it'll 
I'll go down again. As it breaks the surface, see there it needs to scale. And so on. Now you can see in these sections where the bow leaves the water, you can see how the wake is reacting. So it's shrinking back and then scaling forward. And this was a particularly big drop. So as the bow hits the water, the wake shoots forward. So that's going to throw the particles forward to create a big splash, hopefully. So the last thing to do is in those areas where you think there's going to be a big splash you need to animate the wake morph so again kit and when it gets to its maximum scale the morph channel and then afterwards bring it back to zero so again I've done a quick test render and you can see by having the boat in the scene now, it gives the whole thing a sense of scale and drama.